It has finally happened, people. It's happened. It's happened to us. It's happened to Jared and Mike. Good fortune reigns on us today, my friend. Tell them why. We, uh, we're finally in our new space. We're in our new studio space, Is that, is that what people. you mean? Yeah, that's what I fucking uh, mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry it's so boomy. Uh, you hear the echo. Uh, we, we got a really nice studio space, and, and we got room to do all the shit we want to do to help make the podcast better, but there's nothing in here right now, so it's a little bit ba 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 boom boop, boop. Yeah, no, we, we got a space. We took the plunge, and uh, we're really happy with it. We're really happy with it. Fucking awesome. And, uh, I broke my back getting all this shit. Jared had other shit to do, so I... I, was <laughs> I made sure I had other shit to do. <laughs> I was just going back and forth. Nah, Mike's been pack ratting like a motherfucker, and I mean, we got... Uh, God, look at that. There's a carpet in here and shit. We I got, got three carpets. One was four meters by three meters. The other one was three meters by three meters. Huge And the other one's carpets. three meters by a meter, yeah. like a runner. But... Every bit, we it's so it, all for free. Yeah. It, oh, everything now you can is hear it. Free. We uh, we got to get some carpet here and then like curtains and shit to dampen the sound. But uh, it's uh, you're, you're gonna it's gonna be ramping up here pretty soon. Woo! So, um, yeah. So be looking for that. Uh, for our sponsors, you'll see we're gonna put uh, we're gonna give you the tour in the section. So if you're in our sponsor section, then make sure you pop in there and look for the tour. Do you have sponsors you want to name? Oh, I got some sponsors I want to oh, name. Oh, we got some more sponsory mm. people. I gotta pull it. I gotta pull it out. Pull uh, it out, baby. Hold on, let me Pull it out here. and blow this sponsor all over them. God, I'm making too many notes these days in my phone, you know? Yeah, well, I guess it's better too, f- uh, too here we many go. than too few. All right, listen, we got two new sponsors on Patreon. We got, uh, guys, I hope I don't butcher your fucking names. But, of course uh, you will. David Bison, David Bisson, probably Bison. Two I don't know S's? where you're from. B-I-S-S-O-N. Bisson. Bisson? I'd say. Bison is... But if you're an American, you would probably say D- David... Would you Bisson. say Bison? Yeah, because See, Bison... I- Bison... Yeah, I think it's B I S O N. Yeah, right? that's the animal. Right, but why? If if one is spelled with an, uh, I, I would I, say Bisson. I don't, know, I don't know where you're from. I bet she says Bisson. David, uh, thank you so much. And then we got Lars, Corian, Corin, Corin. If you're American, spell it C O R uh, I J N. Is what I wrote. I wonder if I wrote that wrong. No, I think it's oh, Korean. What? Korean. Co- uh, well, is it is it uh, is it Dutch? Because that would be Ein, right? Korein. I guess. I don't know. Lars and David, thank you so much. Thank you. you they're thank sponsors you now. You guys got the password. Go check out our stuff. We got we're lots of goodies you, in we're there for you. We're going to show you our, our, our boomy, echoey uh, studio space Yeah, now. go check it out. Thanks so much, guys, uh, for that. So that's good. Oh, I meant to get a cup of coffee, but it's okay. I'm going to power through. I'm gonna power power through. through, dude. So today, Mike and I, we're not, we're not going to jump into it yet, but I'm just going to explain what we're doing today. Uh, we've been so busy with our shit lately that uh, we fell a bit behind on the questions, and we've gotten lots of really good stuff lately. And so we're just going to fucking knock it out today. Even if this is a goddamn two-hour podcast, we're, we're clearing out the questions, we're, Mike. We're getting them out. Uh, we're clearing them out. Wait, you got the hanu over there. Can I eat this? Are you going to yeah. eat this? Yeah, uh, eat it. Eat, this. eat it up. I'm so hungry. Mike, you've seen the... Uh, you, you've been following the... the what, what is your feeling on the Wien, this opera ball, the Vienna opera ball? I don't, well, How does it make you feel? I don't know, dude. It is, it is a tradition yeah. beyond all traditions, you, right? Yes, you, yes. you cannot fuck with it. You can't fuck with it. You're that, not that's allowed true. to that's fuck true. with it. But I mean, would you want to go someday? Go? You, know, would you, you mean go? be a spectator? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do, you, do you care to elaborate or you just want to aggressively have opinions? What? I... I <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. I hate spending exorbitant amounts of money, right? Yes, yes, yes. I imagine that that thing costs a, an absolute ass ton to go to. You an think absolute, so? Yes. I always thought that was a kind of an invite-only type situation. Well, that's what I mean. It's probably invite-only, and then you pay... Oh, it's like 2000 a plate. Right, like, or like something for Hillary like that. Clinton or something. I can like imagine. Okay. If, if yeah. I'm wrong, somebody mm. write me and tell me. Okay. But if, if anyone out there has gone to this thing, let us know. But and and the pageantry is oh, the way pageantry. the pageantry, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. The fucking waltzes and stuff. Yeah. I'm not down. I'm not trying to diss this thing, right? Yeah. Because I imagine I would probably have fun. I would like to get in a um, tuxedo. Frock. What's it called? You mean like a tuxedo or yeah, a frock? like a, but, uh, a frock with tails, right? Isn't that also called a frock in English? I guess I don't know. Okay. I didn't know that. But I would like to do it, and you know, if I was knighted or something like yeah. that, I'd like to have that big fucking badge there. Oh, I would go with like the mon. I would go Mr. Peanut, monocle, cane, oh, top hat. If you're going to do it, and you don't have a monocle, I would, shame I would, on you. Yeah, I would talk shame through my nose you. the whole night. You know. I, well, not only that, but now that I mentioned, have you like tried these, the sherry brandy champagne? Blah, I, would, <laughs> I have that bottle in my chateau in Ghent. Blah blah. Or no, what's have the you seen really, my awful name? 
<laughs> what? What's the what's the really um, pretentious place to go in Switzerland? I'm trying to think. There's one that's uh, Gustad. G- G- uh, that was Gustad. good. Gustad. Uh, that's that's that. I have you, that vintage in my chateau. You got the Vienna Gustad. color there. It freaks me out, man, because <laughs> it it reminds me. Because, like, I don't know, nothing, because people, like, that, that type of situation is supposed to be really high class. But actually, that makes me feel like it's the most primal act humans do. You know what it's I mean? It's peacocking. <clears throat> yes. Like, do you know about macaques? <laughs> I know about macaques. <laughs> Macaque monkeys in Japan, right? Oh, these are these, yes. These are these, yes, these yes, monkeys. Yes. They, they, the uh, ones that sit in the bathtubs. Yeah, but let me tell you about macaques for a second. All right, okay? tell if, me If you're willing to listen about my macaque, I'd like to give you some information about macaques. Um, they sit in this hot water, but the only ones allowed in the hot water are the ones born of the noble bloodline. Right, right. And if you're not born of this bloodline, it's not about fighting. It's not about anything else. Then you fucking sit in the snow and most of them fucking die. Right. Right. And you, I was watching this. I was like, these monkeys are cruel as fuck, man. Yeah. It's really exclusive. There's no reason they don't let these other people in. But then I, I'm like, wait. We fucking do that. That Absolutely. is exactly what people do. And when I look at this, like, really, like, you don't have the right tuxedo to be here. Like, polish your fucking shoes. Like, <laughs> then I, I don't know. You fucking peasant. I would tell you that story about that concert I sang in, in, like, New York. It was, like, this cabaret thing. No. We did this classic shtick where it was, like, you know, they pulled an audience member up on stage. And mm-hmm. then, like, they sit on his classic lap and they fuck shtick. with him. And it's always embarrassing, right? Uh-huh. Except I was the audience member. And nobody knew I was a singer. <laughs> Right, and so then we were singing some shit from Oklahoma, <laughs> right? What? That, that boomy room is perfect yeah, for yeah. it, baby. No, that's that. But you know, what I mean, that's that classic singer shtick where it's like it, you're you're so embarrassed to do it, but it it lands every time. Yep. And so they pull me up there, and I'm like, oh, I'm so fucking uncomfortable. And then of course I fucking hey, I sing, and everyone's like, oh, look, he can sing. And after the show, this woman comes up to me, and she's like, I knew that something was fucked up because when you went up with those ugly fucking tennis shoes, I knew it wasn't real. Those were just my real fucking tennis shoes. What an you know asshole. What I mean? But she judged the shit out of me because of my shoes. And that night, I think we tried to go to a club after the show, and I got rejected because of my shoes. No. And it was uh, like those goddamn macaque monkeys. <laughs> suck macaque. <laughs> suck macaque. Suck ah. my shoey cocks. Cocky oh, shoes. But, dude, they did, the, they did that classic shtick in the... Um, Thomas Hampson and who's the other baritone or bass that he did? No, the no note? tenors allowed. Yeah, and then there was a tenor in there, and he got up and sang. Oh, yeah. Even on the big leagues, it lands big every leagues, time. Every fucking time. Yeah, they were doing. Yeah, that's right. They did like an end of a song. They had some dude sitting out the whole time, you know, waiting to sing the high C. And they right. just popped into it. I hate being oh, that guy. Oh, it was anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can sing, I can see, sing higher. Yeah. And they do this fucking blah blah blah, and then this all of a sudden there was a fucking tenor going hi. <laughs> I would hate to be that guy because you're sitting there the whole time, like, mm, 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 yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's like, why are you? Mm, mm, yeah, mm, I, I hate that shit. I, that's not me. Mm. You want to get the beer? Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. I've got a, I've got you, a you doozy want to do for you. You got, I got something a you want to say? No, no, no. You say, you say it up. It's Fucking so the cocks. So booby in here. I can probably just keep in the conversation while. Yeah, just do it. Mike, you've been watching the Oscars. <laughs> the Oscars is 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 the Vienna Opera Ball. The Oscar is the macaques on fucking crack. You understand? Yes, yes. That's next level shit. I mean, that is political stuff. That is dressing up. That is posturing. That is peacocking and walking as much as you want. Peacocking and walking. So, uh, <clears throat> while Mike's getting the coffee, I'm just going to fucking rant over here. I'm just going to rant on everything that bothers me about the animal kingdom and human beings. Now, you know what does bother me, though? This, this is actually is random. I've noticed in movies, uh, whenever someone's holding a coffee cup, it's always fucking empty. You ever notice that? Oh, yeah. It drives me fucking crazy because it's very obvious. Put some goddamn water in that coffee My, um, cup or some sand or like, you know, fill it with something. But it, it looks fucking ridiculous. There's no way. It's my wife's biggest pet peeve when she sees somebody on stage who takes a drink and it, it's clear they're just pretending the drink. And she's like, why? Just drink it. That is, that is not... And a difficult water is everywhere. You can fill up that glass with <clears> something. It's not a difficult uh, detail to fix. You don't have to chug the whole Yet glass. It happens all the time. Yeah, and just drink some. You know, like I'm not trying to piss myself on stage, so I'm not going to drink worst, like a liter of water. The but. absolute worst is when somebody has a flask 
Yeah. And there's nothing in the flask, and they do that like huge head back sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, like oh, that's how you fucking drink. So, now this coffee I, cup then, look for it. it I have a me challenge off. for us today. Okay. Because both of us fucking hate this thing, but we're going to do it today. All what right? Are, what are we doing? This is one, one second. It's um, Steamworks Brewery, right? Mike's doing something under the table I can't see. It's Hold really on, I'm weird. trying to see. Steamworks Brewing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they are, I don't know where they're from. Steamworks. Hergestellt in uh, Vancouver, right? What, Canada? Yeah. Okay. This is the killer cucumber ale. Fuck, oh, dude. man. I, I fucking hate cucumber. Dude, so do I, dude. It's the only food I fucking hate. I know, dude. It's literally the... the I I, I'll eat snails. I know. I know, dude. This is why uh, I did this. I like I like the can. The can's you, you cool. To, they they have, have an orca challenge. whale that looks like a goddamn pickle. You have to challenge yourself, okay? Oh, God fucking damn it. But look, we, we have another beer after this. You're going you're gonna to muscle this one down. It and says then, an iconic splash of gherkin. Uh-oh. Okay, fucking shit. I, I like the cans, oh, dude, though. You know what, though? I haven't drunk out of a can in a long time. Mm. Yeah? The thing is, uh, I just had the foam. I just had the foam, so I, you can't really judge on the foam. Yeah, we got to get some, like, towels in here. Yeah. We got to add it to we the We don't list. have anything yet, dude. No, if we spill, it, we're fucked here. Okay, so let's take a drink of this. Tell me what you think. <sighs> okay. It's an iconic splash of gherkin. Right. Ready? Here we go. I taste no cucumber. I do. <laughs> I do. But that's the thing. So cucumber can be manageable when it's a hint, right? When it's a hint. I absolutely hate cucumber. I hate smelling it. Right. It's really Me the too, only dude. food I fucking hate. Me fucking and if too. there was a hint of cucumber that I'd taste it, but... It's, there's a hint of cucumber, definitely. Hold on. It actually tastes more like the cucumber... You know how like people are really big in these cucumber lotions and shit? Like kumquats or what? No, I mean cucumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, God damn it. It, it! That's what it tastes like. Ugh. I don't. I don't taste it. Well, that's good. I'm glad. I like. I like the can. Eh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that we're. You know, Mike. I'm glad you're opening up my horizons. It's just. It's important to try new it things. It actually tastes in life. a little bit more like not just cucumber, but pickles. It tastes like a pickled like a, cucumber. Like a pickleback shot. The can is really fucking cool, though. Yeah. Like. This is like, I would save this can, you know? So it is, um, to, it's a killer whale, but green with the bumps of a cucumber. Yeah, so it's, it's like it's, a cucumbery killer whale. And it's steampunk and it's steampunk, style. so yeah. the, like the inside is, and maybe we, can we take a picture of it and put it out there <laughs> for the know, world maybe. or something? They blew, their budget, uh, they blew their budget on the fucking can. <laughs> I, like the, I like the beer. And they, yeah, it's, it's good beer because it doesn't taste like cucumber. Um, <laughs> all right, we gotta, we gotta get to these questions, Mike. All right, so everybody, listen. Uh, we're doing this until it's done. So, Mike, this might be a three-hour fucking podcast, right? All right, dude. I'm here for you. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see. Let's get into God damn it, Instagram. I love the studio. Happy Women's Day, Mike. Oh, is it Women's Day today? Yes. Nice. To we all, all the lovely ladies out there. all the lovely ladies, you are appreciated. Everyone in the world has an important woman in their life. You were all born, weren't you? So, why don't you call her and tell her thanks? Right. All right. Um, well said, Jared. Well said. Yeah, you know. Okay, God, people say shitty stuff on Instagram to us all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah. This and voting I, thing, if you guys have been following this March Madness stuff, some of you are a bunch of whiny fucking bitches, all right? Mm-hmm. It's just fucking fun, all right? <laughs> and some people act like, like this is a competition and this is like the fate of arts relies oh, on yeah. us. You know what I mean? Like, shut okay. the fuck up, all right? Seriously, <laughs> it's, it's, seriously people, you, you need to get, if you don't have anything better to do, than to complain about how the could matchup? you compare these two singers? Oh They're God. not even remotely comparable. Like, dude, what the fuck? No, Shut your phone so, off so and go like, go socialize. We got, with we people. got that one. It said like. You can't put these two together. They're not. They're not. They're comparable. Not comparable. Singers. They're both fucking opera singers, aren't they? Yeah. Like so, I'm not. I'm not putting a fucking things. tuna sandwich and an opera singer together. Like, if you, if in uh, the fucking March Madness, uh, in the actual fucking poll, yeah. right? If you put the number one seed against the number 15 seed or whatever it right. is, right? right, right. It, they're not comparable. No. They're not comparable. But the thing about these polls is we could have mixed it up entirely, which is exactly what we wanted to do in the beginning. We yeah, wanted yeah. to have But you have to have chaos. four brackets of right. either like so, Europe or America. Maybe we'll do that next year. What, like what, Europe, okay, Asia, America. Hold on, hold on for a second, though. We, we were going to mix it up so it was just chaos Tenors going against basses right. and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But what we wanted to shoot for is we wanted to have 
a soprano, a mezzo, a tenor, and a bass make it to the final four, right? right? right. So we set it up so that each, each um, the north, south, east, west is what you would call it. Division. Uh, divisions, mm-hmm. right? Were the soprano, mezzo, tenor, and then bass slash baritone. Right, so right. we ended up having two people in the bass slash baritone sections mm-hmm. going together that aren't necessarily close to each other, but that's not the point. To win the whole thing, you have to beat anybody. Period. Yeah. So it doesn't matter whether they were they were close to one another. If they were good enough, they were going to face each other anyway. Yeah. So you got to beat whoever you're up against. Period. No more bitching yeah. about it. And to say a bass baritone and a baritone are not comparable is fucking stupid. Like, they're both like low voice singers, A, and B... A soprano and a bass are comparable. It's opera. Right. You know what I mean? If I was putting like uh, fucking uh, Tom Brady against George London, then that'd be my like, what what do you want me? What criteria should I make the but decision based then, on? But even then, even then we're making it we're making it a democratic thing. Yeah. I don't care what criteria you use. All we care about is your vote. Now, so if you are putting Tom Brady, yeah. a football player, mm. up against George London, an yeah. opera singer, I want you to use your reasoning faculties yeah. to be able to tell me for whatever fucking yeah, reason you want. dig deep and push the fucking button. You exactly. Know? You know, next year I'm going to make March Madness emphasis on the madness. I'm going to be like, you know, old tuna sandwich versus, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, versus, I don't know, fucking George London, right? Versus Diana Damrell, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what you want. That's what we're doing next like year. Like grilled cheese and fucking tomato soup what, versus Pavarotti. You people who, you people who are <laughs> complaining about yeah. the, t- the fucking matchups. It was very like... A, I'm going gonna, I'm to make it absolutely mad next year. It'll be final. real madness. It'll be cucumber v- beer, cucumber <laughs> beer versus Pavarotti's tuxedo. I, I, I it, it, when it, when you sent me that, I was like, what the? Right, fuck I, saw, I just, had, I just saw it again because I opened up Instagram here. <laughs> All right, um, look, I'm going to start this off with a plug. Uh, some people send uh, us really interesting productions going on, yeah. and we never talk about it. Right. And, and I actually, it's actually, because want we to. have our, we have our, uh, we have our shit that we need to talk about or that we uh, plan to get out there, and yeah. sometimes it just doesn't make it. But what do you want to plug here? Uh, so uh, there's a there's a person that wrote me what does it say infinite opera company okay and it is a opera company um blah 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 let me see here i'm currently writing producing a beer mini opera trilogy in collaboration with a craft brewery in birmingham uk what we are even having beer brewed especially for each part oh my god can they please fucking invite us are you do you have it i just let me let me let me me. Uh, oh i'm excited I just felt like it had some relevance to your show yeah. uh, of both beer and opera. Fucking yeah. And so then uh, the show is set in 1348, the year of the Black Death, and also the year that regulations were imposed that stopped women owning liquor licenses. What? Up to this point, brewing, brewing was mostly a female trade. Uh, this was the case is right back true? to the... I mean, she, she said it, and they're doing an opera about it, so I assume so. Uh, wow. at, the, at the same time, Brewsters, female brewers, were being connected to the devil and witchcraft. There's possibly a link between the imagery of the witch and the imagery of Brewsters. Wow, cool. You know, you like, stirring, like per- stirring, yeah, stirring in the pot, the pot tall Holy hats, shit. and these things. Appropriate for women. They had today. ale stakes, uh, long branches to signify beer for sale, right? And they had cauldrons to brew. And, that's the, and they had the cats problem. to stop the mice from eating their grains. So it was oh like it was like God. really witchy, right? So the story is about a Brewster who is completely in love with beer and is advised to kill her husband so she can inherit the license. And so they're all drinking beer during the show. Oh and the brewery God. that commissioned the show is called Dig Brew Company, I guess. And the brew will be called Hathor's Revenge. It is a sour cherry and raspberry Berlina, Berlina Weisse. Uh, Hathor was an Egyptian goddess who went on a killing spree. Right. Uh, the people could only stop her by covering her fields in red beer so it looked like blood. She drank this and fell asleep and was too hungover when she woke up. Um, she actually wrote a lot about it. Let me see here. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, there's three different beers. She goes into each beer about this. Uh, the Did shows are the this? second. What? You, you saved this entirely so I would react to it on air, right? There's too much because going on. It's not, even, it's, not even about, it's not even about saving shit anymore, Mike. There's too much shit going on. I can't communicate it all. I know. It's just so good. This is extremely good. When yeah. is the premiere? So she said the shows are the second Friday of each month from this month, March to May. They take place in the brewery, and there's an after party with the beer itself after. Um, I would love to do an SDAO live event there. Let's see. If you want to know more about beer and opera, they made a podcast you can check out. 
Uh, they said maybe we could send you some, a beer for the yes, show. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. So listen, I would Inf- Infinite Opera there. Company, we just gave you a sweet fucking plug. You send us some of this goddamn beer, all right? So uh, people, if you're in Birmingham, if you're in the UK area, maybe think about checking this out. It's I not mean, your standard thing. It's an opera about beer. I would love to take a trip up and see it. I would go. I would go uh, if it was nearby. So cool. No, but they, even, even it's not that far away. Ryanair, baby, makes everything possible. Yeah, I got no time for this shit. I'm going to the States. Um... That uh, May, May I'll be Till back. May, dude. Yeah, I mean, maybe go Till check it May. out. Till May, yeah. Who, um, can, can you guys please write us again? Yeah, write um, us up. Let us know if we get some tickets. Write um, us, uh, write us up, and see whether we can. What and we for can everyone do. else listening, you know, if you're doing like a, a normal La Boheme, you know, don't don't, don't tell us that shit. But if you're doing something, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're doing something interesting, uh, fucking write it us in it. Let you us know. You almost ruined the microphone. Uh, I almost spit this killer whale. cucumber killer whale shit all over this goddamn microphone. I want all three beers though. Look, I know it's yeah, I know it's us, shitty to yeah. ask for, but I, I'm us, really curious. I want all three. Two of each, and we'll do a tasting. And we'll we'll compare it to the the fucking punk whale here. All right, I would so, love to hear more about this. The, the there's comparison. a podcast. I'll send you the link. Just they have wait, a podcast. I would, with can, I, can I fucking, oh, fucking talk fine. about okay. it? Right, right, right. <laughs> you said we could do three yeah, hours today, yeah, so and fuck we're it. gonna and we're gonna. Okay, go. Uh, I would love to know more about this whole thing about the witches. This whole thing coming from the yeah, that was interesting. That was super interesting. You know. Actually, now that I think about it, in vineyards in Germany, whenever mm-hmm. they uh, like, if you go to a vineyard, like they have, they'll have like these little Weinstuben, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you go in, and when they're having a sale, they put a broom outside. Yeah, I mean, maybe that I think has something to do with it. Do- God, that's so a lot, a lot of imagery, like because this imagery doesn't come from nowhere. You know, right. it's not like witches were really doing that. It's like Santa Claus didn't exist until fucking Coca Cola created him. You know what I mean? Like the the I mean there was a Vinox man there was a, there was a Christmas person yeah, yeah. but like the but the, 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 the red the shirt the beard now, yeah. like that's like a marketing thing that was created you yeah. know what I mean and so this stuff comes from somewhere so yeah I, I found that interesting man that was great thank you for writing in that was thanks awesome. for writing this in all right um okay so now we're getting into it here's a question let's see uh. Do you plan on having female guests? Yes, they keep oh, canceling man. on us. They keep canceling on us. We 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 schedule people and they cancel, but oh, we have man. one coming up. I'm not going to plug it yet because it's not sure. Look, on Women's Day, it is actually a really good time to say this. Sorry, we're recording this March 8th, so by the time you listen, this is not Women's Day. Oh yeah, it'll so be March 9th, recording. which is actually International Meatball Day. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, man. It's fucking true. That's not me. <laughs> meatball. Why the fuck do meatballs need a day? I, I don't Why know, would man. They need a day. It, they're Who very the fuck important. Said, you know, you know what that means. You know what that means. That means somebody got really pissed off about meatballs not having a day and started a movement. No, someone had s- like a fucking chapter. We are for meatballs and and fucking lobbied somebody. Somebody, they, they actually made up proposals yeah. about meatballs and why they don't have a di- day. That's how that shit gets done, and that's what happened, dude. That is fucking ridiculous. Well, I think, I think some dude like had a restaurant, and he was like, you know, I got to make a, I gotta sell these fucking meat. I got to sell these fucking meatballs. How am I going to fucking do it? Hey, we're talking about it now. Good for you, dude. Yeah. I, hope that, I hope that the meatball god is shining on you now. Wait a minute. What I wanted to say is yeah. Jared and I, one of our, if I had to rank all of the... All of the conversations that come back up, hmm. like, uh, how would you say? Um, they keep coming up, right? No, I don't know the reoccurring. word. Re- Can reoccurring. Can you turn on a hotspot, man? You got that new fucking internet, right? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got some good. Right. I, got I got no internet, internet down here. We're going to have to find out how to get this basement to work. Um, so I, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, out of all the recurring conversations that Jaron and I have, getting females on this podcast is maybe number one or two. Oh, between all of those between things. us, yeah, we yeah, talk between, we talk about this every week. I mean, it's it's all the time, and it's just it's just random that people we keep have, dancing on us. We have people that we want. We have people, but they haven't worked out yet. It is really not fucking chauvinism bullshit or anything like that. It is mm-hmm. just things not working out. No, but but we but there, there is one. There is one. We we actually have two I'm, I'm that not are talk around about, the corner. Well, we have three. Oh. You mean women or, or women, just... Women, women. No, okay, yeah, but, I, but yeah, okay, four then. We have four really interesting guests coming yeah, up. Yeah, definitely. I'm not going to plug them, but we actually have some really cool stuff coming up. Wait, what, you're not Helena Fish Otter, are you? What, no. What is, your, what is your Wi-Fi called? 
No, hold on. I don't have my Wi-Fi on yet. Mike, I told you to fucking turn on the hotspot, why would man. I, why would I be Helena Fishotter? Why would you think that that would be me? I don't know if people in America know, but there's a German singer. There's a German style of music called Schlager. And uh, how would you describe Schlager? It's like... Like, okay, ima- okay, I know, I know exactly how Did you turn on the yeah, hotspot, Mike? Just the fuck down. All right, all right. Describe Schlager for the people. So imagine... Um, imagine like a... Typical German Oompa Loompa band. Like, yeah, what is that called? Like polka a little bit, right? right. Uh, yeah, kind of, right? Yeah. Like, an ima- like Germanized polka, because polka is Polish, right? I think. Mm. Anyway, imagine that shit, and then just modernize it as much as you can, right? Yeah. So there are, like, modern versions of that. There's this guy, Hansi Hinterseer. Have right. you ever seen him? He is like, ah, ah. I watch it. I watch it. So I'm so happy when I watch Hansi Hinterseer. He's this typical German with the lo- like. You, you have to have a crazy smile, fucking name to do it too. Fucking long um, blonde hair, and he has this dog. And most of the songs he sings are like up in the fucking Alps with people <laughs> churning butter and cows right, around right, right. him and everything like that. Mm. Now then. So that whole thing, the modernized, like, oompa, uh, not oompa loompa, but oompa, oompa, pa, yeah. oompa pa things, mm-hmm. that modernized shit then became even, like, more modernized with, like, oomps, 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 oomps. Yeah, but it's the same basic thing. And there's this one singer, Helena and she Fischer. has this fucking, uh, the one song, Atemlos. And then nobody knows the words after that. It, yeah. it's just fucking but she, she sings well, man. Dude, and the she, melody's actually banging it. It's good, fucking good shit. Helena Fisher, Atemlos, Breathless Through the Night. Go to YouTube, look up Helena Fisher, Atemlos, right. Durch die Nacht. Look, it's a good, she's, she's a good singer too. She's, she's like, she's like performer? one of these singers where people fucking hate her just because she's easy to hate. Right. But she, she's got fucking jerks. And she's, she's got and chops, she's getting dude. up there in years and she looks still like a million fucking bucks. Yeah, she, she's, she sells she's got, out, she's dude. The package. She sells the fuck out. She is the package. She's as close to like a fucking super, superstar that Germany has. Okay. So this wasn't even this girl's question. That, that was like just the prequel to her question. No, I, okay. What I was saying was uh, about that. Well, I can't remember why we got onto fucking. Um, Look, we go on tangents here. Fisher. Okay. Make sure you celebrate International Meatball Day. Ask restaurants if you get a side order meatballs I for free. I cannot wait to we go get meatballs. We keep booking women tomorrow. to come on the show, but they keep casting on us and it's just random. It has nothing to do with anything, but we have a couple female guests that are committed that are coming on soon. Yep. But we also have some great uh, other male guests that are coming. Man, Exciting do guests. We. Yeah, there's a there's exciting guests coming up. Um, so we're not neglecting the ladies. Them. Well, I'm not going right. to say anything. All about right, don't it. don't Never don't mind. say it. I don't want. Okay. Uh, so what she had to say is, I would love to hear more about singers who take a break from music and come back a few years later. Um, do you get people writing about this topic? And she also asked about nebulizers. I think nebulizers are these things you wear on the plane. Is that what a nebulizer is? I, I don't know the name for it. You mean like the like the masks that keep you all? Well, why don't you handle taking a break from singing? I'll look up the nebulizer. Oh, I don't know about taking it. I mean, have you ever taken a break? You, 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 if you're fest, you have no fucking. You have oh, no yeah, fucking the nebulizers. I think. Yeah, you have no fucking opportunity. There's, there's some to. of these corny fucking phrases I like, and one of the ones I like is "Don't quit, take a break." When singing gets too hard and you just can't fucking do it anymore, mentally don't, or physically, just all fucking, of it. Don't don't be like I fucking quit, man. Like don't don't do that shit. Just just take a break, and a break can be a week, a month. A break can be a fucking year. A break does. You good, yeah. It does you good. Does man. a body good? It does. Milk does a body good. So about taking a break, and also there's there's just because I think the reason she's probably asking that is because why would you be worried about taking a break? What possible downside is there to taking a break? I think people are afraid they're going to stop the momentum of their no, career. No, there is. Th- I mean, I suppose I could conceive of downsides to taking a break. I could conceive of it. Yeah. You know, if you, um, I mean, of course, it's a timing thing though. If you just don't have the. Like if you're on some sort of trajectory and then you and then you take that break, it can right. really. It, it, sometimes you just have to strike while the iron is hot, but yeah, yeah. But you know, taking a break to sort of work on shit is kind of cool and kind of important. You know, when you don't do that for a long time. For instance, I've been here. I had my nine year anniversary. Yeah. Uh, it being here in Germany, mm. uh, just just on the fifth, right? Yeah. March fifth yeah. is actually coincidentally. Jared's anniversary of moving to Germany is also March fifth. Yeah, we actually we Mike didn't Mac and I didn't know each other when when I moved here, and we happened to move to Germany on the same day. 
Uh, but Mike's been here longer than I have. Your, your chair's squeaky as fuck, dude. Yeah, I know. It's just going to be squeaking. We got, we got to work on that. So look, I, I understand your point that uh, obviously the better choice is to not take a break because right. careers need momentum. And a lot of being a singer and getting your career started is you're just fucking sitting ready, ready, ready. Right. And then when the door opens, you're prepared to walk through it. But that takes a lot of networking. That takes a lot of getting your name out there, being out there, but also being fresh and ready to sing. Well, you know okay. I mean? let, me tell, let me say one more thing about a break before we go to the next part of the question. Um, I dream about a break. I yeah. dream about it, dude, because... You're doing that fest shit, yeah. Well, not, not just that. Mm -hmm. There is... This is squeaky as fuck, uh, Squeaky as fuck. I'll work on it when, right. when we're done. I'll just uh, have to move. I think to myself all the time, this career is not everything. Yeah. It's not everything. <clears throat> yeah, no. And, you know, you give up a lot. Mm -hmm. My wife mm -hmm. gives up a lot for my career. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if I'm gone, I see what you mean. Yeah. She's she's making the sacrifice. You have to sacrifice. A lot. Even if yeah. it's in in like my fest house yeah. in Darmstadt, mm -hmm. right? If I have a production every night when she comes home from an eight nine hour day of work, yeah. she's then saddled with the kids. Yep. I mean, they're bundles of joy, but then she's got to do it, and it's her responsibility. Period. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, man, I would definitely like to just work and then go home and do nothing and have uh, yeah, not that yeah. she's doing nothing i'm not i don't mean her in particular mm -hmm. i would like to be there with her yeah and i sacrifice that for it so a mm -hmm. break would mean that you don't have to worry about you don't have to wake up more every morning and go hmm okay i'm good yeah, yeah, sure, you, sure. It, you don't have to worry about that your career's over every fucking time you get a cold you don't have to practice all the time you don't have to do all this shit uh, i mean it's it's like, don't get me wrong. The the career is great, mm -hmm. but it's not everything. No, and so if you feel, if you are really, if you're struggling, if you are, I mean, if you're struggling emotionally, like if the grind is getting to you, yeah, I understand a break, and yeah, you sure. shouldn't. It, there should be no, there should be no um, stigma about it. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's the easiest thing to dissect when talking about it but it's the hardest decision to make when you're in the middle of it of course. you know what i mean like i think it's fairly obvious that obviously no break is better as far as like career goes because obviously even if your career is not moving you're learning music it's always good to be learning rep right do you know brahms working do you know verity Requiem? is there a song cycle you could learn is there a fucking new audition rep like right. are you training coaching languages like you can always be working and better and better but if you come to a point in your life where you, it's just you're you're breaking down and you need a fucking break Take the fucking break, One man. of my favorite things that you've ever said, ever, is uh, the number one way to be unhappy is putting your happiness in the future. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself now. And I, 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 I actually think about that very often. And I think to myself, that's sound wisdom. Well, and remember, it, this, it, if you're not happy doing mm. this, it is really not worth it. And of course, there's a certain element of delayed gratification. You have to, you have to put in the hours now yes, yes. to work hard later. And you, no one can see the difference but you. Are you Are you just, is it a hard fucking day and you're working hard or is it starting to fucking break at the seams? You know right, what I mean? Right, right. The thing is, a lot of people, especially in your 20s, people feel this pressure, you know, because like they see their friends winning competitions, the friends are winning young artist programs, the friends are getting jobs, concerts, like getting their careers going and you're fucking left behind. And there's this pressure to get it done fast. Yeah. Try not to get that, try not to let that pressure affect, you know? Right. Just work at your own pace, work hard, be persistent, but... The career happens at different paces for different people, and it's not all fach, and it's not all networking. It's just a lot of it's luck, yep. and a lot of it is just stay in the game long enough. And sometimes when you're running around the track, you gotta walk a lap. Do you know why? You know what I mean? Do you know how you I, gotta walk a lap? You know why I thought about what? Well, first off, that's a good one too. You gotta walk a lap every once in a while. Yeah, and then start sprinting again. But just you know, you know, just fucking put your hands on your side and just quit you know. moving, dude. You're squeaking <laughs> like a you're squeaking like a fucking oh. Oh, I think the neighbors oh. are. I well, think the neighbors. Get the just the tip <laughs> music going there. Oh, I never played just the tip. Yeah, I'll, play I'll, play, I'll play it later. Just, I'll play it later. Uh, well, uh, you know what I? Uh, we gotta why move on. We can't spend twenty minutes on each question. But, I know, but, but get, why? Get it, get it with the tidbit. Okay, fuck it. Just go on. You don't. I was gonna before? say something, but I, I said get it with the tidbit. Get her. Go. All right, man. You can you can hit it with the tidbit. I can't remember what the tidbit was. It was um. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it today. When I fucking hear, I heard some, some, uh, new blood Hollywood star. 
right? New blood, or do you mean yeah. new money? Yeah, new. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, new money, right? <laughs> new money, new, blood? new money, <laughs> new money, Hollywood star, star yeah, okay. right? And they did this fucking interview, and yeah. they were trying. They were there's this impulse for some reason when you become famous to be wise. Yeah, and these people are no wiser than anybody else. They're not. Mm-hmm. These fu- these fucking people, and we have the 10... Like, when people are listening to who a fucking celebrity endorses for a goddamn politician, give me a fucking break. These people don't know shit more than you do, unless no. they can show that they do, right? Yeah. Unless they can show it, but they're not an authority on, on some things that they like to talk about. And what I thought to myself is, <clears throat> isn't it funny that once you get the fame, you feel this impulse because I'm sure I might feel it as well. If I got fa- famous, I might think, well, what kind of wise tidbit can I put out there, right? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. And I thought to myself, tidbit? They, they have, they now feel the ability to do this because now they're famous. But yeah. if somebody else had gotten that role mm-hmm. that made them famous, they would be like the rest of us. It, they'd be, they, those people would be like the rest of us, which made me think about singing, right? Mm-hmm. We know all these famous singers. They're, of course, good. Yeah. But there are lots of really good f- singers who aren't famous. Oh, and yeah. because it might just be because they w- showed up at an audition at the same time. Yep. One just had one it's tiny luck. little thing. It's life thing shit. It's random. That day that got them that thing. And then the career goes from there. Meanwhile, yeah. this person who could be famous mm. isn't. I'm not trying to shit on famous people. No, 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 no. I've thought about this a lot. I mean, obviously there's famous people who worked hard, strategized, earned it. I mean, everyone that's famous earned it in one way or another. Right. Like, I respect you all for being up there. You know what I mean? But at the same time, don't only take advice from famous people. Because that's the problem. Like, with this opera news and all this shit, it's like people only want to hear what fucking famous people have to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but, But, I mean, that's not the majority of people that are that are living this. What do you want to say? You want to read your no, no, oh, no. I thought, Keep I thought going. you were going to say something with the Why can't you fucking concentrate? It doesn't dude? fucking matter. I, I should I, be able to do what I want to do, and you do what you want to do. And if you need it, just keep fucking talking. Oh, man. So listen, Next uh, you, you have to filter out the good advice and the bad advice. Don't just because someone's famous, don't suck their dick too hard, all right? She asked about the nebulizers. Also with us. Also with us. Yeah, don't, don't suck our dicks too hard, do you? No, I mean, you okay. can do that. If <laughs> want, but uh, I'm saying if we, if we give some advice, take it or leave it. Yeah, yeah. Mike and I just share what we think. We're but, but also, most you of the have time. to take this in and mix it with what everyone else in your life says. And then at the end of the day, you have to make your own fucking choice. All right. right. Nebulizers. I don't use it. They're probably good. Humidi- humidifying so your voice is, of singers. course, good. No, airplanes are dry. Calm Fuck. down, dude. Fucking calm down. You're peaking, peaky blinders over here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking pumped up. And this is the first question of like 30. We got like 30 questions. We had two. Right? This is the second question. This is one person, though. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I know. Uh, I see people using them all the time. I'm sure they're great. Mike and I don't use them. But uh, I would like to because every yeah. time, every time... Uh, Every time I uh, get off of a plane, I feel like I just yeah. blew some sort of sand monster. Yeah, I usually like it, my throat is just dry as shit. What I usually do on the plane, my strategy is I uh, sit on the aisle and I just drink fucking water and I piss every like thirty minutes. I just oh, water, yeah, water, yeah, water, yeah. and I suck on like candies and stuff. I stuff, which All stuff, kinds of stuff, which is kind of old school. But um, if I get an European airline that has free beer, yeah, I just fucking. Oh, That's not the right choice. But yeah, these things, Mike and I don't use them, but I think they're great. Look, whatever's gonna help your singing, do it. Who cares if you look like you're Even like some sort of fucking like sick person? Right. Wear the mask. Do the fucking hydration thing. Even if it's just a mental thing. We've never used it. I'm sure they're great. You know, even just breathing over a bowl of water is better than nothing. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. All right. So there's a question for you, Mike. Let's see. uh, For me? Specifically, they wrote to me? Yeah, shut the fuck up. Mike occasionally brings up what it's like being a dad or being in a committed relationship as an opera singer, but I would think it'd be cool if you did a whole podcast on being a parent to the performing arts, Um, especially if your other half isn't musical. As a dad trying to get an opera career started, I would love to hear that. So, any tips on being a dad and opera? You talked a little about it earlier. We can do we can do a whole podcast on that someday if you want. We could. I mean, there are all kinds of things to cover. But you know, being a father, being a tips. parent, and trying to do that with opera. Look, I mean, of not course. tips, but just some look. Insight. Okay, so insight. My, my insight is my any any singing I have comes completely secondary to my family, and I mean that I mean that full heartedly. It doesn't have to be that way to everybody. Right, but I would quit and become a plumber if it meant my family was better off, and it and it meant 
mm-hmm. s- something to my family. It changed your priorities. Of course. I mean, my uh, my son Jack. It, thank God they like uh, my kids are interested in me being on stage and everything, which breaks my heart. Do you have stuff beautiful. to say? Like, could I pee and come back? Yeah, sure. All I can. Right, I right. can talk. Just get the fuck out of talk here. Talk about how often you're fucking sick too. That's the only point I was gonna bring. Oh, yeah, up. I was. Uh, that's that is a big thing. Uh, I um, it's good that he's gone. I won't have to listen to that fucking creaking chair the whole time. I uh. No, no, I, I don't mean to get all sentimental on it or anything like that. I just opera singer. You, um, your your job means a lot to you. You pour a lot into it. But uh, if um, if it were really getting in the way of my family so much, I I wouldn't do it. I would I would give it up like it were uh, a bad habit. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the whole singing thing is uh, the singing uh, with kids. Man, I we can hear that toilet really well. I, um, no, the, the sick thing is no joke. Like you have to, you have to really be kind of diligent, but in the end you're fucked because (laughs) there's no, there's no way whenever your sick kid comes to you and the the nose is running and they say dada, dada, because they're, they can't. Get the fuck away from me. I got to sing tomorrow. (laughs) There's no way you're doing that. What you're going to do is you're say, oh, Jack, it's okay. Come here. Let me take your sickness. He's going to snot and cough directly in every open opening on your face. And it's just... Now get off the sickness, man. No, what, I'm what just else, saying... What else, what else you, you got? You're the one who wanted talk about the fucking sickness. No, tidbits. I, tidbits. I, uh, so the, uh, the, the whole father thing, like you said, there's a whole episode that you could do on it. Yeah. All, all I wanted to say is that um, uh, music... Well, okay, I'll say this. Music is there... Music and art is there to express feelings and thoughts that are typically ev- evoked by being a father, what that means, right? Or being a mother or father, right? Not just exclusively that, but the, the joy, the sadness, the pain, the, the being run down, the pride that you feel. All of those things are, all of those things are like the central themes in, in opera, in art, in human emotion, that you want to put out there into the world. What I can say is I'm definitely, definitely a better artist because of it. Yeah. Definitely. The more you can feel, mm. the better. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because like, I'm kind of opposite of Mike. I'm kind of in control of every aspect of my life in that regard. And so there's a lot of emotions. I don't like, like anger, frustration, pride, like disappointment. I kind of control everything in my life. So I actually mm. don't feel these emotions as much as you do. That's true. You have I more mean, of a connection to that. But also... The thing is, is it's very, I mean, some people, they live their entire life for a career. Some people live it for family. And it's very hard to do both. I think you have to have a priority at one point. I think, Mike, when I see you, I think you, you do your best to make both happen. You are passionate about both, mm-hmm. but your family comes first. And I mean, I've, met, I've, met singers, I've met singers where the career comes first. And yes, sure. there's times where the career has to come first. There's times when the family comes first. But you can't be in two places My at career once. coming first would mean that I look at my career and say the higher up I can go, the more I will be able to. Yeah, like if you moved your family somewhere my... to take a fucking high paying gig. Right, exactly. That would be kind of balancing both. That's, that's balancing both. But uh, when it comes down to it, uh... well, you know, the other thing is you can be completely committed to your craft, to, uh, to your career when you're on stage. Yeah. Like I know that the kids are safe. Mm-hmm. I know everything's good, which means that when I'm on stage, unless I have to think about them, I don't. Right. right. You just access it. So you don't have to think about the kids to access the emotions that the kids evoked right. to uh, to portray something well. I mean, I am I, I am I would say I am as committed to the art and craft when I'm performing as anybody. It's when I'm off and I have something else to do that. That's when that's when other people might uh, rank me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want another beer? Yeah, why don't you mosey on over there and get another I'm beer? Mosey. Can you listen to the next question while you're while you're mosey? Uh, this is an echoey room. I could listen to it down the street. <clears throat> I could just pop open that palate and, and give you some carry. Do you want another one of these? Because I thought a variety pack of these. You want another one? Yeah, yeah, do it. Oh. We're probably gonna need three today. It's gonna be a long podcast. Okay, so next question. I guess the reason I'm writing is because one of the questions you guys answered was in regards to how you deal with traveling a lot and working away from home. 
I couldn't help but notice you guys aren't concerned about your safety or anything because it wasn't mentioned. But has there ever been a time where you where that was an issue for you? Do you have any suggestions for that? I'm mostly in the U.S. Have you noticed a difference in this overseas? As a woman, um, I think this is something we think about a lot. So I wasn't sure if this was something you guys deal with as well. What okay. Does she, what does she mean? Did she? What? She's asking if we've Did dealt with... She? Have we dealt with dangerous shit? She wants to hear about it. What? While traveling? Just while, while pursuing the career, man. I'm sorry. I, I might have to hear it again because I... Uh... Let me just start talking about it. I'm going to lead you, okay? Okay, lead me. Um, yes. Mike and I have both had uh, dangerous situations. Have I? Yeah, you, you slept in a goddamn elevator, man. That was of my own neglect. Yeah, that was your fault, but but you did was, it for the career. No, I didn't. No? No, dude. Why were you sleeping in that elevator then? No. <laughs> <laughs> here, introduce this so I can drink it. This looks fucking badass here. This is the... Um, Steamworks, same brewery. This same is the brewery. I got a variety pack. So Heroica Red Ale. That's right, and it's got a big old fucking... Firefighter saving firefighter some, saving some lass. Some lucky lass. All right, so tell them... Tell them why you're in the elevator, man. Okay, dude. Uh, I have a lot of dangerous shit. I can, I can just crack, 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 crack right now. You don't have dangerous stuff? Dangerous? What the fuck would be dead? All like, right, just do your thing. I'll do my thing. All right, just go for it. No, he's talking about um, my violin teacher plays for the Pittsburgh Symphony. My old violin teacher plays for the Pittsburgh Symphony, and they did. They I was talking about Hamburg, right? When you slept in Hamburg. In Hamburg, yeah. Okay. Uh, and they were on tour in Europe. And he's like, hey, Mike, come up, uh, come up to Hamburg and see us. And so uh, I wasn't that far away. So I went up there, and uh, after the concert, it was, um, mm. uh, I think, the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto they did with... Um, it's pretty important to the story, Anna huh? Sophie Mota, right? <laughs> Anna Mota. Or I can't remember her name. I, I get her fucked up with Anis, Anna Sophie von Otta, right? Yeah. That one. Any fuck. Um, <laughs> so I went there and... You know, watched the concert. It was great. Yeah. Uh, went back to the fucking hotel. We drank. We we had jollity, all that sort of shit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even bother to look when the last train went back to um, my hometown, nice, right? Nice, yeah. So I, you know, it, it was like, okay, I looked at my phone and it was like, holy fuck, the next train leaves tomorrow <laughs> at five, right? Yeah. Tomorrow morning. Okay. So I thought to myself, all right, that's fine. I'll just bite the bullet. And fucking get a hotel room. Nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing in the not in the Jungherberger, like the hostel, the youth hostel. Ah, uh, okay. Not in yeah. Not Hamburg's in the hotels. tough. Hamburg's tough. Nothing. You can't get so one spontaneously. I tried to do something that <laughs> I've wanted to do for a long time. It was like a golden opportunity. The problem was I was in nice clothes, right? Okay. I wanted to do this for the longest time. I thought to, I used to always think rather arrogantly. I must admit. Yeah. If I were a homeless person, I'd be a really good homeless person. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you I could find really good places to sleep. Warm, good places to sleep. Yeah. Oh my God, is that so fucking difficult. Yeah. Around the train station, like, yeah. they, people They take, build these places so you can't fucking sleep. Right, them, they build those places, which mm. is clear. You don't mm. notice that walking around, but they build the places so that you can't go fucking sleep in a nook. Yeah. Right? So... There were other people sleeping there too, so yeah. I also had some competition, right? And in the Hamburg um, Bahnhof, the uh, train station, there's this one. I, I finally found it. I tried in a photo booth, yeah. right? One of those photo With booths. With the curtains, yeah, yeah. Really fucking uncomfortable and rather sure. disgusting. Sure. The elevator going from the top floor of the train station to the bottom floor, right. though, was one of these glass elevators, and that didn't see. They kept that. Pretty clean, relatively yeah. clean. Okay. So what I would do is, there were two, right? Two mm. of these glass elevators. So what I would do is I laid down, and that's where I was sleeping. Until I felt it moving, I would stand up. <laughs> and pretend stand you were fucking sleeping. And pretend like, oh, okay, I'm getting out of the, yeah, here, here's my floor. I'm getting out now. I would go and get on the other elevator <laughs> and, <laughs> and then sleep, sleep again. All right. <laughs> and then I came up with a system, right? Yeah. It's not a permanent system, though. Yeah, I, yeah, I no, mean, no. But that, that worked for that night. That but worked I, for that I, night. I would have just gone out and gotten hammered till 5 a.m. That would have been my strategy. Nah. Look. I was tired. Dangerous situations. Yeah. I mean, like, what do you mean? Of course, you know, that's a spectrum, but... Uh, that was rather dangerous that, now that I think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as a woman, that might have been more dangerous, you know? Yeah. I um, wouldn't have done it as a woman. I don't, I don't know about how safe it is for women compared in Europe than uh, America. I feel like Germany is in general safer. 
But uh, dangerous situations, I've been in cities with no money. I've been in cities with no food. I've been in cities without a hotel. I've stayed in bad hotels because I didn't research it enough, because the pictures look fine during the day. You know, you always want to look at something at night, um, but most of those are my fault. You know, right, right. Um, I've been on buses where crazy shit go down. Early on in my career, I did whatever it took to get to the audition, and I don't know if I would give that advice to people. What? Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pick and choose the auditions you do. You know, you you want because the, the Hollywood paints this picture like, I, I I gave my last dollar and then it all worked out. You know this American Idol fucking like. You know thing? how many? That's people, not how it fucking works. That yeah, is but not you know how, how it works. How many people gave their last dollar and then they just didn't have any more dollars? Yeah, no one <laughs> writes stories about those people. Yeah, and then and then that person works at, at a fucking bakery or whatever. Like no one tells those stories. Not that there's anything wrong with. No, that. there's not. But but don't give your last dollar. Don't ever do that. That's irresponsible. It's not poetic. It's not artistic. Don't. Well, it is poetic. And artistic, yeah, but it's Lobo him shit. You know, like he's burning all his stuff. Really, that dude couldn't have gone and chopped down a tree to get some extra money to pay rent. You know, you fucking Rodolfo. Did you try? Yeah, your red I tried ale it. Yet? It's good. It's good. It's good. Wow. Um, listen, Heroica Red Ale. Heroica. About 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 dangerous shit. Yeah, I mean, all I want to say about that is there's there's doing dangerous shit to yourself, and it's often your fault. You know, often if dangerous stuff happens, it's because you're somewhere late at night. You did not book a cab, so you're walking back to a hotel. You didn't research the map, the area, the bus, and you kind of just threw a very small amount of money to make an audition happen that maybe shouldn't have happened. Right. At least in my life, that's when dangerous shit happened. The most, I mean. Yeah, I, like I said, I could I could go so on and I on and on. So I travel on. is more what she was talking about. Yeah, travel. I would say save money so you can do it safely. You know, this get is a taxi from here to there. Don't be walking down the street at night. Research where your hotel is. Is it near a park? Do a Google image search. You know what I mean? Have a way from point A to point B. Don't leave things unplanned. That's when dangerous shit happens. Yeah. As far as like, if you're talking about auditioning in fucking like different countries, like parts of Russia and India and China and the Middle East. I don't know about that, but again, do your research. Well, what I would say is, uh, we should we should bring this question back up when we have a, a, our first female on. Uh, yeah, we'll on do the that. Podcast. We'll do that because this is something that is uh, a little. Um, it's not encountered by men as much as it, 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 as it is women. <clears throat> women uh, men don't have to deal with it as much. Yeah, as women I mean, do. I, I've had different. I think it's different though. I've had different dangerous things. Like the most recent ones, I did. I know, but travel in general. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Louis C.K. said one of the most ill-advised things is for a woman to go on a date statistically you're going to your demise right <laughs> well i guess you could say being in a locked room with louis ck is also one of those statistically, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You gotta, where's that advice come from bad, bad things for women but what i mean is his point is still salient right mm. it's a more dangerous world at night for those for those women who are well, on like out at a performance and they're yeah. walking back to a hotel. Yeah, be careful. Of course, but traveling traveling is a skill. And I noticed this when That's I right. cuz I travel all the fucking time and I don't even think about it anymore. But when I travel with people that don't travel, then I notice it's really a fucking skill. Not just planning, but like packing and all that stuff, but also like a skill that you can get better at. Yes, but having this like sense of like where you are, where's around you, am I walking into a bad area? You need to have a lot of perception stuff and a plan B. And like this stuff like having pepper yep. spray, having like like a panic button, having calling someone, being on the phone with somebody, like this type of stuff is important. But I will say that in my life, most almost every like because of course you can be walking down the street and someone comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And you can't do for that. But most of the dangerous situations that happened in my life have been because of poor planning. Yeah. Or or and like this is how divas happen. I get how divas happen. Because like in Hamburg, uh, when I did that gig, do you remember that hotel they put me in? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They put me in a hotel that was literally a crack den. It was underground, and it was uh, this dude that was fucking I high out of his story. mind. I don't know if I told the story on the podcast, so I, I won't tell the whole story. But like, basically, I was in this room, and there were these fucking crackheads there till five in the morning every night. The theater had booked this hotel for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I didn't check the hotel. The theater's like, we have a hotel for you, and I did no research. If someone books a room for you, check it out. And before you That's get a there, good tip. No, this and this is a hard lesson I learned. But Be- don't just trust people. If someone books a flight for you and it's like some sort of, because I had a flight booked for me once that had like a, a, a 13 hour layover. Right. I was like in Dublin, 13 hours. Right. You know what I mean? Like check that shit. And before you're at the airport, before you're sitting at the, in that fucking crack den, you should have called someone yeah. and you should have been like, 
Das geht gar nicht. You know, you and look, fucking... and you weren't in Dublin for 13 hours. You were at the Dublin fucking airport yeah. for 13 hours. Yeah, and that's because I didn't. I just trusted people. Right. Jared, we got a flight for you and we got a hotel. Don't worry. No. What hotel am I fucking staying in? Right. Google it, image search it. You have to be active about this stuff. So, yeah, we get off this topic, but as far as dangerous shit, yes, a ton of dangerous shit has fucking happened to me, you know? And it's normally my fault. In Seattle, too, I used to do jazz music. I got jumped. I got mugged. And it was always because I was walking down some shady you fucking street. You got jumped and mugged? Yeah, of course. And it was when I was walking down streets, I didn't have to be walking down. You know what I mean? Uh, can, I just, can I just say something real quick? What? To transition. Yeah. Uh, our last most liked post on Instagram mm. has 911 likes. Today, your fucking like opera cat and receive good <laughs> luck for your next audition currently yeah. has 1,474 fucking likes. Yeah. It's been up for 13 hours. Yeah, dude. dude. That's it. it. I, I'm sorry. I know that's not big on mm. Instagram for likes, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> That is absolutely fucking ridiculous, dude. I got all cucumber at the end there. See? Yeah, dude. There you go. It, it's pretty formulaic, you know? If singers like two things, they like superstitions and cats, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's I just everybody. Uh, that's not singers. Yeah, but that's no, singers are like, everybody. if I don't drink my tea and I don't, I don't, <clears throat> then I can't fucking sing, Look, you know? Look, the, uh, the fucking Egyptians yeah. got it right, right? Super fucking superstitious and cats. They are they are the ancient equivalent to what we see on the internet today in memes. Yeah. You got a cat and you got some superstitions. But <laughs> ready to go. All right. <coughs> uh, I grossly underestimated the possibility of getting through these questions. Wait, wait, wait. Can you uh, can you uh, tell me how long we've been on? An hour I, almost. Okay. I, I don't want to do I don't want to do three hours because we we have other shit to upload <coughs> this month. <coughs> yeah, I mean. I, like there's literally like thirty fucking questions. Well, good. We've we, done, we've we done get, three. We, you know? There are there are more podcasts to be had than from the questions. I actually really like doing the question podcast. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Here. First off, do you have a just the tip that we can do? These are all just the tips. Okay. Then play the goddamn music. I want to. I want to hear it in this in this echoey shit, in this echoey little. Get your microphone yes, down there. Oh. Yes, love. Oh. Hello. <laughs> this is totally not appropriate for the podcast, but uh <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Do no, what I, what, I was, what I was about to say. Oh, actually, <laughs> I'm gonna abort. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> anyway, um <laughs> you should have just said it, dude. I had you a, can fine, I'll say it. it. Fine, I'll say it. I had a roommate in college, and he used to <laughs> he used to have sex with this girl. And uh, like the walls were paper thin, so I could fucking hear everything. Right. And she used to always ask questions. Like that was her dirty <laughs> talk, right? <laughs> so she'd be like, "Are you fucking me?" And he's like, "Yes." Like I <laughs> hear him answer. You could hear me a little confused. Like, <laughs> "Yes." Yeah, I thought we you were know? on the same page with this. Not, not questions like, "Do you like that?" But like narrative questions. You <laughs> like, know, like. Yes. <laughs> is that your penis inside me? Yeah, like that type of stuff. Like, Wait. is that is that your dick? It's like I could not. Yes. I yeah. could not help but be mega sarcastic. What do you think it is? Yeah. Tell me literally what you think it is. Tell. I want to know. Yeah. I, yeah. If you get weird sex talk, you got to come back with weirder sex talks, right? No. Is know, that your I, dick? I, no, it's my fucking broomstick. <laughs> like you know what? <laughs> like what a Dane Cook. No. My oh, dick yeah. feels like corn. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, uh, for me, it's just. That would that would kill that would kill the bone bone right? Would it? No, you absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't be able to help uh, such a stupid question. I wouldn't be able to help but get really shitty about it. I meet weird with weird, you know. You yeah, he, he asked me about it once. We were having like breakfast, and he was like, "I mean, what do you say to that?" I was like, "I think yes is a good answer because <laughs> I can hear everything." And his answer was always yes. <laughs> what other? Example? Are you are you taking off my shirt? Yes. I don't understand the, the point of the questions. It was just narrative questions. Not like, do you like that? But it's like, are you taking off my shirt? Is that your dick? Yeah, but it's are not you fucking, fucking me? But it's like, not fucking Jeopardy, dude. She could say, you're taking off my shirt. That's narration. That's still weird. That's narration. What she's doing is this fucking Jeopardy weird turnaround shit where she has well, to Well, she ask. forces you to answer yes or no. Yeah, she's forcing it. a yes or no question. Like, that's the weirdest dominatrix trait I've ever heard. I would, I'm, I would I'm go, going to answer. You're going to answer any question I have. Right. No matter how fucking stupid. I'm going to get hypothetical this next time. This is crazy. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. 
Would you would to have, have been, have fucking... Okay, anyway, okay. <laughs> Look, Mike, all right. We, there's two more questions in our Instagram account, and then I'm going to have to leave the email ones because we also got like 30 in the fucking email. Okay. So, um, tidbit now. Tidbit. Tidbit. No 10-minute rants, Mike. Okay, fine. All I right. can't guarantee, but whatever. Um, <sighs> okay, so uh, I was listening to your sex podcast. It's a good one. Nice. Um, and hearing you guys talk about relationships gave me concerns. Uh-oh. I'm married to my high school, high school sweetheart, and I'm in my second semester of grad school, and already I can feel like I'm gone too much. It's not a threat to our relationship, but I'm planning on making this a career. I don't plan on getting any less busy. How do you guys balance your relationships? You got to start coming up with stuff now. Start. It's good that you're thinking about it already. Yeah. Did he say he was married to her? Yeah, married to his... Uh, that's right? a different game, yeah. Wait, yeah. look. Read again. I want to make sure before we go on. I'm married. Married to his high school sweetheart. Yeah, that's a different game. Because yeah, you're look, dating, then you just fucking bend it till it breaks. But marriage... Married, <laughs> 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 oh, man. You should, be a, you should be a relationship counselor. <laughs> that's, that much is clear. Hey, just no, use it up and no, throw no, it shut away. Shut the fuck up for a second. Right, right, um, right. No, no, no. It's, um, look, marriage is a tough game. Marriage is a tough game to play. You should, if, if you're having concerns about it already, definitely, definitely think about it and mm-hmm. start and start working on things yeah. that you can do. I mean, uh, that's where opening up and finding out what is, um, what's, unsat- what's unsatisfactory, what isn't. You know, I dealt with a long-term relationship when we were married. I, long I was, distance. Yeah, long, uh, long distance. Right. Hopefully, your marriage relationship is also yeah, long right. term. Also long term. <laughs> but I, uh, but that was that was a difficult thing because oftentimes, especially if time, there are right? kids concerned, uh, concerned, there can be resentment that pops up. Yeah, sure. So, and, th- and the problem with that is, so you're away, right? And uh, he or she has to deal with kids, right, the mm-hmm. whole time, right? The the saintiest of saints cannot help but feel resentment during that, right? That me- what that means is when you're back, so the, the impulse will be, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to be father of the year or mother of the year, and I'm going to be back there, and I'm just going to be really good. You cannot do enough. You cannot. It is impossible to do enough to make up for an actual la- uh, lack of presence. Now, that is a difficult thing to manage. Mm-hmm. That is a difficult thing to manage, not only on your part, but on the part of your partner who has been dealing with all the shit while you're gone. It takes real understanding on your part that you can't do anything to do it. I think, or to make up for it, I think acknowledging that, you squeaky fucker. I can't I help think, it, man. I think acknowledging that and being open about it and being like, look, I know... Yeah. I know it's fucking aggravating. Mm-hmm. I know that I can't do... I know that even if I tried a million years, I could not make up for time right. that's gone. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that I it's not lost on me. I want. I, I appreciate... Showing appreciation is a big thing. That can uh, go I mean, a long way. Basically, I mean, you communicate. Communicate. You, you got to communicate. And communicating is not always good. Communicating is sometimes... You got to find your borders. You got to find your boundaries. And that's often different for different people. In the relationship, but it's also communicating the right things. You it, so if you do if you don't appreciate it, then maybe you got to think about your relationship. But yeah. I know you do. Yeah. I know you appreciate the sacrifice that is put forward. This mm-hmm. is with kids. I mean, when you're when you're just single a little bit, the thing should be oh! okay. <laughs> Stretchy McSqueakerson. I told you tidbits. No, it's fine. It's fine. The, the, if you, if if it's if you're single, then the the big thing should be that. You have to, each person needs to be free to not go, go fuck around or anything, mm. but free to do things that makes them feel good, not just sit home and be waiting for the other person to come yeah. home. You mean, it's just part of growing up. You know, part of growing up is like you, uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're fucking 16, you do your homework, you go to school, you do whatever the fuck you want when you're a fucking teenager, every goddamn day of your life. Yeah. And part of becoming an adult is that you have to then balance your wants and needs with what life is requiring of you. Right. And as you get older, you just have to give up certain aspects of, of you have to become less selfish, less self-absorbed, less self-centered, and you have to make sacrifices for other people, for your know, fucking children, whatever, whatever's going on in your life. You can't have everything you want. 
And uh, I mean, we've, we've, we've actually talked about this theme a lot on the podcast about relationships, family, and like you got to choose career or family. You got to find your borders with people. You got to communicate and you got to have tricks. You know, right. like for me, if I want to make a relationship work when I'm on the road, two weeks is my limit. If you're gone for two weeks, then you need to make time to see each other. Yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. That, that's a rule I have. That's not a rule for everybody. Because but you have a rule because three weeks, four weeks, that starts when I, um, being distant. So let me let me uh, let you into my heart, my mm. soul, my my daily life. Right? Well, then I still got some more points though. So if I have a, if I have a don't, day, don't, no, steal. no, no. This is this is it's an important point uh, because it goes on what you were saying there. Prioritizing, right? Mm. Um, if I have a day that's free, right? I, I so let's say I'm on, in a production and I don't have anything, or more importantly, I I'm not in a production, right? And I don't have too much music to learn. You, during the day, have all this time to stay productive, right? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? And what I said is, all right, what are my, what are my um, obligations here? I found three. And my career is, is tied up with the me section of it, right? I have three uh, priorities. One, family. Two, me. Mm-hmm. Three, SDAO, Sex, Drugs, and Opera. And what I said to myself is if I have a, three day, uh, if I have a free day, I have to do something mm. for my family yeah. I, that benefits my family. Mm. I have to do something that benefits me, and I have to do something that benefits Sex, Drugs, and Opera. Now, the me thing is not important. It is not, uh, is not something that you should overlook. You have to do things for yourself also. But... If, and this goes for going away also. On a long-term thing, you need to pri- say, my relationship is also priority. If I do something every day, I do something that benefits my relationship, and I do something that benefits me. Yeah, it's good. Solid advice. Thank you. All right, let's next, move on. Next, next question. Um, how, uh, how much time do we have? What time is it? Hour seven or so. Great. We're right on track, baby. Uh, okay, let me find my, myself here. Yeah, look, the only thing I'll add to what Mike said, I'm not going to continue on it because it's, it's too much time on that. But um, yeah, you know, communication, the career is not everything. You got to find a balance in your life. Obviously, it's not just singers, it's accountants, it's everybody. Uh, you can't stay as late as the, uh, at the office as the guy with no kids or family. That's just how it is. Right. You can't, you can't stay till three in the morning. You know, you can't go out to drink with the director. You can't go do every single audition. That's right. And have a wife. Right. And if you have kids, then it's one step further in that direction. Right. And that's just how it is. Yep. You don't get to have everything. That goes back to the, fam- the guy who asked about family. Yeah, so that's all kind of the same thing. All right. This girl, she's... Um, this is the last Instagram? The, the last question, because yeah, yeah. we got we to wrap this shit up. All right, so... Um, I loved your episode about rejection. I listen to your podcast while I'm traveling, 16 hours a day. Jesus Christ, you're driving a fuck ton. 16 hours? And she's got all this like commuting she's doing for auditions and stuff. Oof. I was wondering if you could discuss or give advice on just how expensive this whole thing is. I'm several thousand dollars into debt right now after paying for young artist programs and application fees and travel expenses. And just how to combat that. Keep doing what you're doing, please. Yeah, it's all kind of the same shit, I think. Um, like, I just, I just... You go. I, now I got to go pee. Okay. I, um, I just said to Mike, you know, like, you can't stay as late at the office as the guy with no kids. And look, the fucking reality is some people are pursuing opera careers and they don't have debt. They, they come from rich families and money is not a barrier for them, you know? Some people have a family. Some people have children. And so then they're more limited with their time, even if they have money. You will be limited. And it's different for everybody. You know, everybody has their limitations. Some people have health problems, you know? I've met a lot of people doing this career that they have health things that limit them. And so talking about how expensive it is is a sliding scale because it matters, of course, how much money you have. Somebody with a lot of money is going to sink... Yeah, you could spend fucking millions pursuing an opera career. You know, if you're coaching every goddamn day, if you're flying all over the world taking voice lessons, you could spend a lot of money. Or you could spend nothing if you only audition for shit in your city and take the bus. You know what I mean? So it's a spectrum. But um, look, your situation is probably like like mine and a lot of people where you're sitting on the other side of university. And so you can't exactly choose to not have that debt. That debt is now with you. And that's kind of a monthly responsibility that you have to have. Um, so you have to balance which auditions are really worth it. And sometimes you have to look at this career as an artist. And sometimes you have to look at it like a business person. 
And obviously, if you want to do an audition for artistic reasons, oh, I want to do that role, then you might not want to invest as much money in that. And plus, if art, if art, if being on stage is the most important thing to you, then maybe look at doing your own things. There's lots of people that start their own companies, that book their own concerts, and they perform the roles they want to without having to pay to audition for it. No one's stopping you from singing fucking Tosca or Carmen. Get a pianist, find a stage, and fucking do it. You can do that shit. Uh, as far as this whole thing costs, I said on one of the other podcasts once, in 2015, I know that for like a good six to eight month stretch, I was spending 800 to 1000 a month. Oh my God. But spending money for auditioning, so I think of it like this in myself. I say 100 to 200 bucks every month is just a fixed cost that I have to spend on either renting a practice room, coaching, or traveling for auditions. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're working, if you have like the parts of my life where I've had a lot of roles and concerts to do, then just that steady 200 a month is enough to keep the train going. But if I have a big gap in my singing, then I need to up how much money I'm investing in this thing. And then I will push it up to 800 or 1,000 a month if I'm traveling and coaching and this stuff. Right. But that's not sustainable. That would be $12,000 a year. I can't invest that much in singing. You know what right. I mean? But I can do that for two months. I can do that for a summer. So you go in spurts. And also it's about timing. When I have a lot of money, then I, of course, I put money away. You need to be making the same smart life choices that everybody makes. You need to be saving for retirement and all that shit. I put money away. But if I have more money, of course I spend more money on singing. And if I have less money, then I probably have to say no to an audition or something like that. It's timing. It's life stuff. But it's kind of as expensive as you make it. But also look at the payout. Don't invest a lot of fucking money for something that's not going to pay you back at all. That's right. I know you got to get a yap. I know you got to get your first role. And that's different. But you might have to... It's better, it's better for it all to happen a year later for you and for you to take 20 auditions over two years than for you to take 20 auditions in one year and fucking put yourself in a financial hole. Because nothing slows your career like having so much debt that you can't fucking audition. Yeah. Because you can get to a point really quickly where you've spent all your fucking money and now you can't audition and you can't audition for four or five months. If you get yourself in the hole where now you owe money, you owe a loan, you own a credit card, you owe on a credit card, that's not like I'm going to work hard for one month. That's going to take you half a year to dig mm-hmm. yourself out of that hole. Don't put yourself in the hole. Don't spend your last dollar. You know, invest in things that are worth it. But how much does this cost? I've spent easily up to 1000 1500 in a month traveling to places for auditions. I've also just spent nothing. Because I don't want to waste the money on it. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, but it can be expensive, but you got to decide. Do, sh- do shit that's worth it. Dude, now I know why we could, un- uh, we could fucking hear the toilet flushing. There are three <coughs> doors I closed none between of them. here and you closed fucking none of them. Why Fuck did that. you do that, you animal? Because I, I, I like to live free. You okay? goddamn animal. My dick needs the space. <laughs> Look, before we, before we stop today, I want to tell a funny story. Um, All right. So, so Mike and I, uh, we've, been, we've been getting ready to launch merch here. And uh, we're, we're working on it every single day. And it's coming. And it's we're gonna, so right around the corner. We're going to open the SEO shop. But it's, it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of organizing, shipping. It's a lot of product testing. It's a lot of stuff. And one of the biggest aspects of this is getting the finances in order. You know, you have to have the bank account, the PayPal, the fucking Stripe, the Patreon, the, the fucking Payoneer. The I had no idea everything. that all that stuff even existed. Yeah, because if you want to take credit card payments, if you want to take euros, if you want to take British pounds, dollars, yens, you gotta, it has to all be filtering somewhere, you know? And you don't think about it until you get in there. But I had a big hang up with PayPal for a long time. And uh, you remember that. We were getting emails yeah. all the time. Like, it was you're, so you're fuck you, motherfucker. What's your fucking business? You tell us exactly what the fuck you fuckers are doing. Like, we get these aggressive emails. And so I called them, and they were nice. And then uh, I gave them my information. They looked at my account. And then they became kind of, like, aggressive. And they were like, Mr. Ice, you tell us exactly what your business is. What exactly are you using this PayPal account for? Right? Anyway, at the end of so how is it their fucking business? Well, anyway, keep going. So the point is, like, you know, to sign up for this pay because we have a PayPal business account, which is a little different than like a normal PayPal account. So you have to send them all your business information, your business address, what you're doing, blah 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 blah. And when a field is too long, you know, like my name is Jared Kevin, blah 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 blah, blah then they would only see the first word or two of that. And the problem is, is under business. Um, like spec, like business. What would you call that? Like oh, it only showed up as sex and drugs. Yeah, they saw sex drugs, <laughs> and so they literally thought that we were doing drug dealing and prostitution. Oh my god! And she was like, she was like, "What are you using this account for?" And I was like, "We're a fucking opera podcast. We talk about like classical music." <laughs> and she was like, "Oh, okay." And then she pushed a button, and it was clear, and it was done. Oh my god! But they were really they were they were holding this until they fucking like because they, they must have it sometimes that drug dealers are fucking trying to do this stuff, right? Yeah. 
It must fucking happen. Definitely. People, this was a good podcast. I liked it. I like just talking about random shit. Yeah, sorry we couldn't. I, I really thought we were going to get through more questions, but it's we're going to have we're just gonna have to do like two or three each time. Great. You know, I, I think that's fine. Um, all right. So that's the podcast for March 9th, 2019. Uh, International Meatball Day. Uh, International Meatball Day. Eat some meatballs. Eat these fucking balls. <laughs> don't, um, don't fucking feed away from my meatballs. We'll huh? be do, we'll, we got a lot of great guests coming up for you. Uh, yeah, we'll be man. launching merch. We'll be we'll be doing our live shit. We got the studio. So fucking stay tuned. See you.